Bienvenidos, bienvenidas. This is the last of five videos made on our recent trip to Lebanon. And we end where we began our trip in Beirut. A fabulous city, unbelievable city. I'd like to call it an eternal city. And we really, really, really can't wait to share details with you. But first, this is Latina Literati. Beirut has a perfectly shaped port. It's shaped like a half moon. And no matter how hot it is, in the hottest day of summer, people are walking, some people are running in the morning. It's just a wonderful place to take in the beautiful views of the Mediterranean and the seaside air. And this has made it a place of human habitation for 10,000 years. We're talking about Paleolithic. And of course, it was a Phoenician stronghold. And after the Phoenicians, the Greeks and the Romans and the Crusaders and the Ottomans. And so you have just layer upon layer of history in this thriving metropolis. Truly, it's a place where you can find everything and anything. Amazing restaurants, incredible clubs. But the history of Beirut is so complex. There are so many facets that go into when you think about Beirut as a city. There are different areas of the city and of course those played a part in its history. So I'm going to just really generally talk about um, the last, I don't know, 75 years of history uh, to give you a sense of the city and, and where it is now. World War I, you have the French mandate. What does that mean? Basically, through the Sykes-Picot Agreement, the European powers are just chopping things up. So again, another place where settler colonialism is the root of all current evil. So you have uh, Beirut as part of what is Lebanon. And you also have, uh, that's in 1943. In 1948, you have the Nakba. And that is when the Palestinians are not allowed to return to their homes. They're thrown out of their land. And so you have over 100,000 and they are, of course, fleeing to places like Lebanon, where they will unfortunately spend generations in camps. Some will intermarry, some will gain Lebanese citizenship, but most will stay or leave or find other places to live. So you have the constant turmoil around Beirut, and that has an impact on, of course, the history. You also have the great general uh, Nasser of Egypt with the flag of Arab nationalism saying, hey, we don't need these European powers. We're going to just, we're going to decide our own destinies. And the U European powers and the U.S. are quite afraid that this will actually happen. So, of course, they start to back different groups in Lebanon. And unfortunately, there is a lot of unrest. Before we get to the Civil War, let me just say that in the 60s, Lebanon was the place to be. As the Persian Gulf resources are increasing, many, many, many of those resources are finding their way to the banks of Beirut. It was a financial center, an intellectual center, a cultural center. So you have all of this thriving as at the same time you have these other forces that are building up tensions. And so in the 70s, you'll have the civil war erupt and you'll have um, about a decade of where the city is, is divided, uh, what was called the Green Line, the zone where you had uh, part of the city held by the Maronites and part held by uh, the Muslims. And so eventually there are peace accords that are negotiated mostly by countries in the region that want uh, Lebanon to be a place where they can return. And you have under the famous politician Rafiq Hariri, you have the rebuilding of Beirut. So Beirut, I remember hearing in the 90s, oh yeah, it's the first city to have uh, fiber optics under all the streets. And I just couldn't believe it. I thought, this, you know, they have like jumped over uh, everything that everyone else is trying to do in terms of bearing the infrastructure to not have lots and lots of things over, overhead. In any case, you have disruptions. Um, every politician, or most politicians that had any merit in the modern history of Lebanon are assassinated. The assassinations are just without, how can I put this? They're just 
one after the other after the other. Uh, Hariri will meet his death in an explosion in front of the St. George Hotel. So every politician, one after the other, that tries to lead this nation, uh, and of course from the capital of Beirut, uh, meets a, a horrible, horrible end. So now you have a situation where there's no president. And it's so funny because the country obviously is somewhat limping along without a president, doing whatever it is it can do. And truly, you have about 5 million Lebanese in Lebanon and about 20 million in the diaspora. So as with all countries that have huge diasporas, it is those in the diaspora that are trying to help family members and others. Um, and they prop up the economy when they go on vacation, when they purchase homes, when they purchase uh, other things in the um, areas of Lebanon. And we saw that a lot. We saw a lot of homes that um, looked like they were started but had not yet been completed. And I am assuming that uh, that has to do with the currency crash. Uh, most prices are in dollars, so if you go, you want to take dollars or euros with you because the currency is fluctuating all the time, and so people prefer to uh, deal in hard currencies. Um, so in any case, Beirut is a, an amazing, amazing place. I mean, there's the city, that the part that was rebuilt, and what they call the old part that was really rebuilt to look old, with lots of shops, lots of restaurants, amazing restaurants, amazing places to go and see. Um, the last weekend we were there, we were at a club called the Music Hall, which was wonderful, and it was full of old music, in other words, traditional music, as well as modern music, and there were tributes to everyone from Queen to uh, some of the oldies from the United States. So amazing musical presentation. You're out in the open, and it's one of the areas that was rebuilt after the explosion in 2000. So you have one tragedy after another, and the Lebanese people rebuilding and rebuilding and rebuilding. And it's just it's just amazing to see um, what has been done in Lebanon. There are lots and lots of really beautiful buildings. There's, of course, the famous Alameen Mosque. There's also the Orthodox Cathedral. There's the Maronite uh, Cathedral. And so you have beautiful, beautiful uh, buildings. And um, some areas are still being rebuilt. And some areas have already been rebuilt. And so you can see the contrast throughout the city as you're going um, to different areas. And there's just an amazing art scene. We went to a couple of art galleries that were just spectacular in this area that is a mixture. I and mean, you have a uh, Byzantine and Greek uh, kind of uh, artifacts mixed in with modern uh, architecture. Just amazing place. So really, Beirut is um, truly an eternal city. And I hope the current political and economic crises is but a bump on the road because I have complete faith in the Lebanese people and their ability to resolve the issues that are at hand. You also have events like the Syrian civil war and that impacts Lebanon because you have now Syrian refugees also trying to flee and find homes uh, in the areas of, of northern uh, Lebanon and, and Beirut as well. There have been several invasions and they were able to throw the invaders out and in recent times and again Lebanon is a country that is full of creativity you can feel the energy you can feel that the people truly do um, have a vision uh, for what could be what could be and and so I would say that what is standing in the way is a lot of corruption in the politicians that are held up by outside interests that want Lebanon to continue in chaos and so I feel like only in unity can the Lebanese come together and get beyond uh, what these politicians would have them accept as normality. It is not normal to not have uh, basic services and to not have uh, things run as they should. In any case, uh, I want to thank so much the friends that made this trip possible. It was a wonderful, wonderful trip and an amazing place to visit Beirut. Our last day, we had a fabulous tour of the University of Beirut, which is one of the oldest universities there, the American University of Beirut. It's, it's up on a hill, so it has a beautiful view of the Mediterranean, um, and so it has reminded me a little bit of UC Berkeley, actually, in terms of the Campanile and some of the buildings, uh, brick buildings and things. So really beautiful campus and their uh, museum is spectacular. They really have a wonderful museum. It's done really well and it goes back all the way to Paleolithic times to give you a wonderful overview of Lebanese history. So highly recommend that as well. So again, fabulous time. Thank you so much uh, to those who made it possible. 
And of course, now on to my favorite part of the video, the book recommendations. I have two book recommendations for you with regard to Beirut. The first one uh, is called All She Lost, and the book is by Dalal Mawad, and it is a tribute to the women who were victims of the explosion of the port in Beirut, and it talks about the pictures uh, of before, during, and after in terms of the rebuilding, but also a tribute to those um, that were affected by the blast, those who lost their homes and lives and family members. And so I think it's a, a fabulous book because it really shows you the impact of a tragedy such as this and, and the spirit of resilience with which the Lebanese people are able to, okay, let's start again, let's start rebuilding, let's redo this. Amazing, amazing. The second book is more of a overview history. The book is called Beirut, and it was the last book by Samir Kassir before he was killed, unfortunately. And uh, it's, it's an overview of Lebanese history, so it's just magnificent pictures of Beirut and the history of Beirut. And so you have everything from, you know, Roman ruins to modern skyscrapers. And the, it's just a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, really, really recommend those two books. And as always, uh, I'm not sure if your local library would have these books, but your local bookseller may be able to get them for you. And as always, we have independent links for booksellers uh, in the description box should you care to acquire either one of these books. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey to Lebanon. It was a fabulous, fabulous way to spend uh, a week. And um, as always, we thank you for joining us on this journey. And let us know. Let us know what you think, what books you recommend, and what you're reading, because we'd like to hear from you in the comments. Thank you so much. And as always, con mucho cariño, mucho salud, mucho amor, gracias. Thank you.